some of those hurdles. So really that's what our goal is today. Our goal is not certainly to say this is the way to do this thing. Our goal today is to say, hey, let's start the conversation. Let's discuss options. Let's look at the process. And I think uh, those of you who are close to the processes and understand the difficulty, those of you who are not, might walk away saying, holy smoke, I had no idea. All the things that go into uh, transportation enhancement or change. You know, we live in a world of sound bites, microwaves, tweets, and very short attention spans. So our structure today is a little different than you might be used to. We have asked our speakers to cram decades of experience and wisdom in really complex issues into 15 minutes apiece. So that will be a challenge. So each speaker only has roughly 15 minutes to, to address their issues. Uh, I do not have one of those shepherd's crooks, but what I do have is a Melanie Worley. <laughs> By the way, don't make the connection with the crook thing and Melanie Worley. That was not the point. <laughs> I don't really know what course of action she'll employ if you go over, but I'm fairly certain she will take some course of action. She will have that ever-present smile on her face when she does so, but just understand that she is your person to kind of take a look at. That's why she's in the front. It's not because she's a suck-up to the teacher or anything like that. She's here for a purpose. Um, so we do appreciate your leadership in this. I mean, in large part, the reason we're having this today is because of, of Melanie and, and her ability to push these kinds of things through. So. At the end of our session today, we're going to ask our speakers to come on stage and we'll take a few minutes and field questions from, from you. Um, so there will be some cards that will be handed out at some point and you can fill that card out, put your question on it, and also make note of anybody that you'd like specifically to answer that question. I gave Tamara a hard time earlier and said, hey, a couple speakers are leaving, so any of the overflow questions, Tamara will take care of. <laughs> Isn't that right? Okay. So. Thanks once again to our speakers, thanks to the attendees. Uh, I believe we're going to have this program online, so uh, if there's other folks that would like to see it, if you'd like to push that to them, certainly that is something you can do. Thank you very much. So, without further ado, let's begin. This is in really small print, and I have to wear my old man glasses. Our first speaker is Sean Cutting with H FHWA. Sean started working in the division as the Senior Operations Engineer in July of 2000. He began his current position as team leader in 2004, and his main responsibilities are working with his team of engineers and the CDOT and local agency officials to deliver the federal aid program in Colorado. Other responsibilities include local agency program, value engineering, value pricing and tolling, design, and consultant contracting. And prior to this assignment, he was a design engineer in Central Federal Lands Division for two years and then he served for four years as a transportation and environmental engineer in the Washington Division Office. He began his career in 1992 with FHWA. Very well versed. I think you'll appreciate his comments. Sean, if you come forward and speak with us. Good morning. Like uh, Dean said, my name is Sean Cutting. I actually work in the uh, Lakewood Federal Highway Office. Um, been working for about 10 years or so uh, on the C-470 corridor and have a little bit of uh, interest for sure as I use this facility quite a bit myself. I don't think I'll take up the 15 minutes allotted to me, um, not, not because uh, I'm necessarily afraid of Melanie, but that's part of it. <laughs> but I know... Uh, I'll just give my extra time to Reza here, who I know gets very excited and enthusiastic when given the opportunity to talk. So uh, hopefully we can help, I can start off a little bit more efficient. Uh, I also have a desire to be short and quick when doing presentations to, to large audiences. And um, it's something that's been drilled into my head since I was uh, probably a, uh, about 20 years ago or so, the last 20 years. It comes from a close friend of my dad's. My dad was a uh, high school football coach and a history teacher in high school and uh, when he retired I mean that, that's the profession you want to be in if you want to understand the level of impact you've had on uh, the folks that you come across in your profession and as a result they give you tons of uh, retirement they, they want to invite you to retirement parties they want to get you to uh, inductions into Hall of Fames and all kinds of awards and there was this one guy who would give these presentations to my for my dad on his accomplishments and he was a real close friend and he would uh, get up there, give this real powerful speech, sit down super, super quick, and everybody would be like, wow, that was fantastic, nice job, you know? 
But the funny part of this guy was the next presentation, the next presenter and the next one, he'd be sitting down at our table, mumbling under his breath, five minutes, five minutes. Why is this guy talking more than five minutes? Nobody's listening to you beyond five minutes. <laughs> this guy, every, every, every time we had a, uh, a function, this guy would always say that, and that was his mantra. So I'm always kind of up here focusing on trying to be a little more efficient. So I guess with that intro, I only have about four minutes left to give you my message. So <laughs> but um, the main point of my message is that uh, if we're going to at least drive the speed limit in trying to get our efforts to drive C470 into the future, we're going to have to keep continuing this partnership that we've started in the corridor and make it stronger. And then as this partnership grows, I'd like to just briefly touch um, on what our federal highways as an agency can offer the partnership to help them explore opportunities to advance it and get finally to um, what we all want, implementation of some solutions out here in the corridor. So freeways like C470, they're a CDOT managed facility. You know, it serves a wide variety of users. Um, it, it, it has a huge impact on the quality of life for the folks that are around the facility that live here. And uh, although CDOT and Federal Highways, uh, sometimes Federal Highways are the ultimate decision makers for how the facility will be managed, um, you know, we realize that those decisions um, can really be made better and enhanced if we do a good job of building relationships in the corridor and uh, establishing a good coordination and the partnerships that I think we've started here in this corridor. So even if Federal Highways and CDOT has that ultimate ability, uh, if there isn't enough agreement among the users here in the corridor, um, there's, there's essentially you may not be able to afford it. And when I say not afford it, you may not be able to politically afford it because there's not broad enough support or you won't be able to afford it in today's reduced sources of the standard, or the standard sources of state and federal revenues, because without that broad support, they're not likely just to be able to fund it with what we currently um, operate today with our regular sources. Uh, the history of, of the quarter, at least in, like I said, in the past 10 years since I've been engaged, has shown that uh, Federal Highways and CDOT, we can develop a solution. You know, it meets what we, intent, what we wanted to do to fix mobility and address some of the issues. However, we've, we've failed to grab uh, enough of the broad support, and as a result, nothing has happened on this quarter in terms of the major improvements. There's been other improvements, of course, but in terms of meeting the ultimate goal that I think we want to do in terms of C470's future, we haven't had that broad partnership to be able to get our leaders to support this. But however, today, I'm seeing that the timing is much better. The, the teams that I've, been, that I've seen operating, they're, they're creating and building this, this team approach that I think is effective and will ultimately result in something that will catch the attention of our leaders and will um, bring some uh, uh, solutions on the ground out here on C470. I think it's a lesson that we're all well aware of, um, but with the recent approach to funding um, complex, big uh, highway projects, like uh, using the TIGER program that the federal government created, uh, we've been reminded that the stronger the partnership, the more likely our leaders will look to find ways to help us out. And like I said, today's C470 team, it's developing that kind of partnership. And my hope is that, and the expectation is that that continues. And so what I'd offer um, is that I can briefly tell you about how Federal Highways can help uh, bring some expertise and assistance to the team. Uh, Federal Highways, three or four years ago, created a, a new office in our Washington, D.C. Uh, area, and that is a, uh, called the Office of Innovative Program Delivery. Uh, their website, I'll have to read this quote to you, it's typical good federal language. Um, their purpose is to provide tools, expertise, and financing to help the transportation community explore and implement innovative strategies to deliver complex infrastructure projects. <laughs> that might ruin my five-minute speech there. Oh, but um, essentially what it means for C470 is that when this team is ready and they're at the appropriate stage, is that I recommend that, the, that you work through Reza at CDOT and Mike Sherotis at uh, HPTE and work with them to tap into our Federal Highway Office in, in, in D.C. And they've helped a lot of states, um, I'd say a majority of the states across the country, they help U.S. 36. Um, we've had a workshop out here in the last six months to try to explore big projects and just talk about what's available in terms of options to help uh, implement these complex projects. And so uh, I think together, if you do that, you'll drive a lot faster to the future of what you want to see on C470. Thank you.